welcome back. Today we're in the book of Exodus and we're looking at verses 26 to 30. Then you shall take the breast of Aaron's ram of ordination and wave it as a wave offering before the Lord, and it shall be your portion. You shall consecrate the breast of the wave offering and the thigh of the heave offering, which was waved and which was offered from the ram of ordination, from the one which was for Aaron and from the one which was for his sons. It shall be for Aaron and his sons as their portion forever from the sons of Israel, for it is a heave offering, and it shall be a heave offering from the sons of Israel from the, sacri the sacrifices of their peace offerings, even their heave offerings to the Lord. The holy garments of Aaron shall be for his sons after him, that in them they may be anointed and ordained for seven days. The one of his sons who is priest in his stead shall put them on when he enters the tent of meeting to minister in the holy place. Okay, you know, we're not being exhaustive here because these are three, four minute, five minute bits mostly. But still looking at this, we have some interesting pieces going on. For example, the ram of ordination is offered not once, not twice, not three times, every day for seven days. It's here in this verse, and it's also going to, we're going to see it in verse 35 again. Uh, doubly emphasized. The process of consecrating a priest, they had to kind of hang out there, that they were there, and they had to stay with it. So here you have seven days in a row, every day. This offering that's described happens every day. So we look at the commentaries, you know, on the wave offering, what do they have to say? And then one says it was this way, one says it was that way. The fact is we really don't exactly know how they did the wave offering. Uh, was it waved around? Was it simply lifted and then set down? Uh, the detail perhaps doesn't matter so much, but it's it's just a piece of the picture. There are things that the Bible does not outline in exactitude, and we need to be content with those things and content with the information that God has revealed to us. We shouldn't be adding and, and cutting and pasting and adding some more bits just because we think, oh, it must have been this way. If there's good evidence for that, share your evidence. But let's be careful with the word and let the word say what the word says. So it might seem kind of strange, but every day they have to put on their garments, you know? So every day, it's the same thing as they go through this, this ritual uh, of becoming fully ordained to the priesthood. And also these garments can continue to exist from generation to generation. I'm sure there was occasions where they might have had to make some repairs to the garments, but they kept them careful. And then if you, if you were one who grew up in that line, you're in the Levitical priesthood, and now you receive the garment, it would kind of stand in your mind that uh, this was the maybe perhaps the same garments worn by my, by my grandfather or whatever. So kind of helping you remember, this is a long-standing uh, practice. We could call it a tradition, but this is, this is a tradition or a practice that God has given, and it carries on down through. So uh, people would have respect for that. You know, we live in this throwaway society, you know, you... You, everything you buy is in a wrapper. You throw the wrapper away. A lot of things you buy are designed, you know, designed obsolescence. You, you get to buy that. How long do you think your washer and dryer are going to last? Well, some of those machines might go away pretty quick. Uh, so we're kind of in a throwaway society. These guys were in no kind of, these people didn't live in any kind of throwaway society. What they had was less and they were careful with what they had. Here we have the clothing of the priests, which would have been treated with reverence and respect for the office of the priesthood. Okay, we'll see you tomorrow, tomorrow morning.